Today on Earth Focus, Scott Hoffman Black on the ecological impact of neonicotinoid pesticides. Coming up on Earth Focus. Neonicotinoids are a relatively new class of insecticide and coming on the scene in the 1990s. It is the fastest growing group of insecticides in the United States. These insecticides are really toxic. Now that's of course what insecticides are, they're really toxic to insects. What makes them a real concern is they're really long lived in the environment. Once applied, they can last in a plant for up to six years after one application, up to two years in the soil. And once they're applied, they're in every part of the plant. So you apply them, they're taken into the plant, they're systemic. They're in the leaves, in the stems, and in the flower, nectar, and pollen. So from the perspective of pollinators, these neonicotinoids are a real, real potential problem. Most of the information that's come out on these neonicotinoids is uh, based on research on bees. But now as we're almost 20 years on since these insecticides were approved for the market, we're finding that they affect many, many more organisms than just bees. These are really broadly toxic to insects throughout the environment and uh, most importantly, they are readily transferred from farm fields, from your backyard, into water that goes into streams and rivers that sustains the life of many aquatic organisms. So we know that these are highly toxic to aquatic insects and that they're now routinely found throughout the United States and Europe in these aquatic systems. Insects are really the base of the food chain. If you like to eat salmon, you can thank a small fly in the stream that it ate when it was a young salmon. If you like to bird watch, you can thank insects. Almost all birds at one part of their life cycle eat insects. And we really are concerned because of the large scale use of these chemicals, their high toxicity, their really long term persistence in the environment that we could see a faunal collapse where we see the insects collapse and then the, potentially the birds and the other animals that rely on, on these insects for uh, their food. We're already seeing broad scale decline in our butterflies. Many of our butterflies are declining at precipitous rates. We're seeing broad scale decline in really important pollinators like our bumblebees. Perhaps 30% of our bumblebees are in decline and a quarter of them at risk of extinction in the near uh, future. And not all of these declines in these animals can be pinned just on neonicotinoids, but neonicotinoids are likely one major factor in the decline of this broad suite of animals. One of the things that we're now seeing is really some widespread resistance of pests to these chemicals. They're being used at such high levels and being used in a prophylactic manner, which means they're used regardless of whether there's pests or not. That is the perfect recipe for resistance. New research shows that in soybeans, perhaps 70% of the neonicotinoids used on soybeans in a seed treatment are not needed. There's no pest that they're controlling. So if we just used them only when they were needed, we could eliminate uh, insecticide use over millions of acres. Unfortunately, the system is set up where these are promoted as a safety net. You know, you can use these things and then you just don't have to worry about it. And, and that's a big failing of the agricultural system how it's set up, as well as the chemical companies that are really just promoting their use. Federal agencies like the Environmental Protection Agency are really supposed to be um, managing these insecticides in a way that causes minimal harm to humans and other animals. These chemicals are supposed to be studied 
prior to when they're released into the environment. Unfortunately, the way the laws were written in the early 70s really give a lot of uh, say to the chemical companies. The chemical companies are really running the show here. And unfortunately, these chemicals are often, and I would say most of the time, released before there is adequate information to show whether they are harmful in the environment. I think neonicotinoids are a prime example of that. We approve chemicals really at the speed of light. They're approved really quickly because these chemical companies have a lot of money at stake. But then when we find that they are potentially problematic for human health, for the environment, for pollinators, these agencies move at a glacial pace to pull them, potentially pull them off the market. The United States government has not taken any or very little action on this. The European Union has taken action. They have banned the three most toxic chemicals for the next two years. In Europe, my hope is that they will ban them for good. In the United States, we're asking that the EPA stop the use of neonicotinoids until they do a review to tell us where and when and if they can be used in a manner that is safe for the environment. What's interesting to me is that we're not talking yet about the human health issues related to neonicotinoids. These are not very to acutely toxic to humans, and that's a good thing, but they could be carcinogenic to humans if used over the long term. Neonicotinoids are systemic. If you buy an apple and neonicotinoids were used on that apple, they're inside that apple. If you buy broccoli and neonicotinoids were used on that broccoli, they're inside that broccoli. If you buy a tomato, it's the same thing. Neonicotinoids are inside it. Should we be feeding this to the next generation when we don't know the real ramifications of doing that? Everybody is eating a chemical that is very closely related to nicotine when we know that nicotine is so cancer-causing. And we really have not done the long-term studies to show whether neonicotinoids are. To me, that is a, a real failing of the system as well. It's not just about bees. It's not just about the environment. It's that we're not taking care of humans. Airwaves, a global channel of uncompromising stories. World news, documentaries, entertainment, and culture. Link TV, connecting you to the world. For more information, visit linktv.org.